well the other day. We are going to continue. Uh, so uh, let's just uh, go back to my notebook. There is a couple of sections that we're going to cover today. Quite interesting uh, topics. Okay, uh, so uh, what we did the other day, we introduced a new notion of integral and that's what uh, line integral. So a function was given, a scalar valued function, and then we find the integral along the given curve. So that's uh, the one that they call it, uh, uh, okay, line integral. And then we extend it to the, to the vector field, extend it to the vector field, and uh, eventually the, the, the one that you got at the other day, just to remind you, you see this is uh, the type of the situation that we're going to have. So we extend it to the vector field. The vector field is going to be kind of force F. Then the line integral would be changed into the into the work. So you know this is going to be a, a force, a force field if you like. And then along the curve, then you want to find the amount of the work that you have to do to have to impose in order to move the particle. So in order to evaluate it, the way we did it is just. Uh, the formula is this one, R of T is just the equation of the curve. So if that the R, we just, you know, the equation of the curve would be given, parametric equation, we change them together and the result is simply, is going to be a notion of the integral. Okay, so at the end, it's just a scalar valued integral and nothing nothing to, to worry about to get these, these numbers. Okay, so, the way we are going to apply or to continue today is uh, we are going to introduce a version of the fundamental theorem of integral from calculus one. Uh, you know that when you want to integrate, uh, if uh, we have two types of integrations, and the one that we call it indefinite one or antiderivative, and the other one which is a definite. So we connect them together. The connection is fundamental theorem of calculus. I just reminded that uh, theorem from uh, calculus one, and then we extend it, extend it nicely to the, uh, these uh, type of integration, the line integral, then you will find out that most of the time, even you don't have to integrate really, you'll be able to get this one because the, the, the fields that we usually use in science, they are mostly conservative fields, okay? And it's gonna be conservative things getting much, much easier, okay? so. All right, just to remind you from calculus one and the definition, and at the end of the day, you will arrive at some very interesting results of this part of the course or uh, of the line integral. Okay, so uh, the title is going to be this 15.3. So our target is fundamental of calculus, if you like. Right? So what is going to be the, the fundamental theorem? Okay, that's going to be fundamental. Theorem, but this time for in calculus one, you do it for the okay for the integral, definite integral. Now we're going to do it for line integral. For line integrals, you have to see the version. Okay, you have to create the version. You have to create a similar version, and then the, then they get the result. Let's see how we can create it. We go back to see what we have, then we are going to modify it. So let's recall ourselves that what is this theorem in well, or for the ordinary function. So there you are. So this is just the reminder. Okay, reminder that uh, recall that. Recall that if we have a continuous function, of course, if f is a continuous, okay, continuous function on the closed interval of A and B. We take it to be continuous to be integrable. Okay, it's a function of one variable. And F is, F is its antiderivative. It's uh, antiderivative. Okay, and the derivative, so, so that Remember the definition of antiderivative is that the f prime of x is going to be equal to the f of x for all 
x inside a and b. Okay, so this part is just uh, antiderivative. Now then uh, we connect it to the definite integral. So the, the conclusion is going to be then, then this f is going to be integrable in the sense of the definite integral. Then f is integrable or remain integrable on this closed interval of a and b. And uh, the conclusion is going to be if you want to find the integral from a to b, f of x, d of x, okay? Uh, it's, it's like, you know, it's like if you substitute that give you kind of a prime of x over here, okay? If you just substitute, you know, informally. Informally is going to be something like you get this one here, and that would be end up with, you know, this is going to be, and the derivative of a derivative of the function that gives us f of x. Then you find the f of x from a to b. So that gives you f of b minus f of a. So that's a kind of independent in the fundamental term of calculus or integral or a function of one, one variable. Okay, so simply that gives you f of b minus f of a. So this means if you want to find this integral, you are going to find that this is going to be the, it's going to be equal to the value of the antiderivative at the end point of the interval. You see, this is going to be the end point of the interval. It's going to be f of p minus f of a. So this is the one that you have already. So what we're going to do, we are going to extend it to the notion that uh, uh, we have here, the line integral. So let's go informally to see what we can do. You know, you create, this is the way you do mathematics. So everything's going to be informal. You just try moving around to see if you can create a new theorem. So you set up the theorem first. The difficulty is to setting up, then you prove it. So let's see how we're going to set it up. So suppose we are going to consider now, we change the direction. We are going to start with a function, but this function is going to be a function of two or three variables. Okay, so now suppose uh, this is it. So from now on, we go up to the calculus HD, higher dimension. Okay, now suppose, suppose F is a function of two variables. So F is, uh, okay, F is a differentiable function. The extension, okay differentiable function, this time of, uh, of two variables, or three variables, of two or three variables. Okay, three variables. This is going to be the case, and the C is going to be a curve. C is going to be a path, a curve is a smooth curve, of course, as usual, is a smooth, Okay, a smooth curve. And then, you know that I want to introduce a, you know, create a field. Then you know that the gradient of the F, okay, the gradient of F is what? The gradient of S is a vector field. Is a vector field. Is going to be a vector field. Okay, and uh, since it's a vector field, then we can talk about what? We can talk about the line integral. So if you want to find the line integral, this is going to be the line integral of the vector field. Okay, this is going to be the vector field. Okay, it's going to be dot dr. Okay, the dot dr along the curve C. This is going to be the case. So if you want to copy whatever I did over here, it's going to be the same as, you see, this is going to be the F prime that I did or that under derivative. So the result is what is going to be evaluation of this function at the end point. So uh, the function is going to be the, this potential function, if you like the F. Okay, at the end point, this is a curve. So the end point of the curve is the equation of the curve going to be R of T. The end point would be when T is equal to the A and T equal to the B. So the version is going to be this one, look at this. 
So this must be the function is like the f prime that we did. So the function at what? At the end point, it is the curve is going t equal to the a to t equal to b. So the end point would be f of r of b. Okay, minus f of r of a. You see? Of course, you know, where r of t is going to be just where r of t is, r of t is the equation. It's going to be the equation of the, of the curve. Equation of the, of that smooth curve. Okay, a smooth curve. A smooth curve, uh, curve C. Okay, so that gives us uh, something, uh, something interesting uh, to, if we can prove it. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, uh, seem to be, it uh, seems to be a nice uh, extension of this one. And uh, what else can you do if, suppose you do this one? So what else? What else is, uh, again, this is it also. Also now, if, uh, if F is going to be what? If F is going to be conservative field, is a conservative, okay, conservative vector field or conservative field, you know that, then, then what will happen? When it's conservative, you know that this is going to be what? Then uh, there is a function, okay, there is a, there is a potential function, okay, potential function, function f, so that, remember, so that the gradient of that f would be equal to your potential function. So if you know all this, then what you're going to do? Then uh, therefore, the price is this one. You are interested in finding this integral, remember? F dot dr over c. If you know that this is going to be a potential function, if you know that this is going to be conservative, then you know that you can write it down as a gradient of a potential function, gradient of the potential function, you see, instead of finding the integral with the method that we talk about it, you can change it to this one. When you change it to this one, you already got it. Okay, so quickly that give you that give you results and you don't have even to integrate. You know that the result is going to be the value of this function at the end point. And when it's a potential function, you already got the, got the, you already, when f is conservative, you already got the potential function. So you don't, you don't need to integrate, you just find the value of the function at the end point and then you're done. Okay, so that is the, that suggests the version of the fundamental of calculus that we can extend it to the function of, okay, two or three, three variables. So that's a plan. Now we can prove it in two seconds. We can prove it that, that this is going to be the case. Okay, any question? Just want to understand it. What is going to be the role and how we're going to, uh, how we arrive at this, uh, this conclusion that we talk about it. So the only thing that we have to do is we officially to prove this one. It's very easy to prove. Okay, so I'm going to make it official. And I just give you a two second proof of this theorem and then you know what to do. So what's going to be the plan from now on if this is given to you and you want to find it, you better check to see if this F is conservative. If this F is going to be conservative, automatically you find the F potential function because if you want, if you want to try it, you know that. You can test it if, you know, if it is going to be conservative, you have the condition that we talked about before. So if it's going to be conservative, you better find the potential function and find integral using this formula, rather than going through the one that we did the other day. The only time that we are not going to do this method is that when this F is not going to be conservative from now on. But if it's going to be conservative, in some problems, we give you the hint, and you know, they are going to be one problem, they give you the hint, they say, oh, prove that the F is conservative. Then apply it to find the following integral. Then you know what to do. And sometimes you may have to try it yourself. Okay, there is something else that you arrive at this type of integral, then you better test it first before going through this, okay, these integrations. So as you can see, make things so easy. That's why they are so, so popular. 
and we're going to make it easier for you, you know, at the end of the day. So I'm going to make it official. So I'll just give you an idea of the connection of these type of theorems. Okay. Now make it official and prove it. So that is, this is fundamental theorem of calculus, if you like, or line integral. So as we, you know, everything we talk about it, make it official, we have a curve. So if uh, C is uh, going to be a smooth curve, okay, this is going to be a smooth curve. You know, what does it mean? Is, you know, this differentiable R of T is not zero, uh, given by, of course, the vector function by vector, the equation of that curve usually denoted by R of T, vector function R of T. And your T is going to be between A and B. So the curve and the equation of the curve, everything is given to you. And then you have a function. And F is, as we talk about it, is a differentiable function. F is differentiable, I've already talked about it. So I did have a DDA, okay, F is a differentiable. differentiable function. This is a scalar value function. Okay, function uh, with, uh, with a continuous uh, gradient because we want to make sure that the integral does exist. Uh, with a continuous, uh, okay, continuous uh, gradient Okay, continuous gradient vector. It's a vector field, of course. Del F. If this is going to be the case, then you have the price. That's a fundamental theorem. Okay, so if you want to find the integral of the gradient of the F dot dr over C. So this is simply the variation of the function at the end point f of r b minus f of r a that's it so we got the function you just evaluate that two points okay if you want to see the proof uh, is this is it the the proof is going to be i'm going to show that this is going to be the derivative of something nice and i integrate it you see that's proof easy proof and note the, the following. Just the way you are going to find this integral, you see, the way you find it. Note that uh, gradient of the F, you see the gradient of the F is equal to what? You know, the partial derivatives. So this is going to be the, the partial derivative round F round X, round F round Y. I prove the function of three variables, round f, round z, that's your gradient. Then the dr, what is the dr? The r is a differential of the r. You know, differential r is x, y, z. So it's going to be the differential r going to be what? It's going to be differential of the x, if you like, a differential of the y, and the differential of the z. So dot product. So this is going to be dot dr is equal to, remember the result is going to be a, a scalar function. So dot this, so this is going to be round f, round x times the dx. This is, uh, you know, this is respect to the time. It's x prime of t, so it's going to be something like dx dt. Okay, this is it. dt or the differential of the t is the same because it's going to be, a function of one variable, and it's going to be plus, plus the round f, round the y, and this is going to be dy dt, and this is going to be round f, round the z, and this is going to be the dz dt. Okay, that gives you this one. So, uh, according to the chain rule, this is just a uh, Okay, this is going to be just a derivative of a composition function, you see. And the function is going to be simply, it's going to be d dt 
of this function f of r of t you see that's a chain rule derivative of all side times the inside remember this is a function of x so there is a respect to the x times the x dt is also a function of y derivative respect to the y times the y dt and the and the other one okay uh, so uh, that's it integrate both sides if you integrate both sides what's going to be the result so the integral of a gradient of the f dot dr along the c is going to be the same as the integral of uh, you know a to b and d dt because this is the function of t f of r t okay uh, that is uh, going to be the case uh, so when you integrate this uh, derivative you know the derivative would be dropped down and then you are going to get what so this is going to be simply equal to the f of r of t okay when t going from a to b which is going to be simply f of r b minus f of r a that's it you proved it see it's a nice and nice observation so this means if you want to find the integral the line integral along the curve c if your function is going to be of this form you simply evaluate the f at the end point of the curve end point of the curve and then you that so that would be the the fundamental theorem of uh, or fundamental of calculus or integral for the line integral any question uh, let's evaluate it so uh, as i talk about it the, the next step is automatically that the way we're going to use it if you're going uh, conservative force if the force is going to be conservative so this is would be quickly uh okay quickly this would be the same as the integral of f dot dr and then you find the result right away okay let me just give you an example to see how i'm going to operate it you see this last part is just the conclusion that i need and we are going to use that if f is going to be conservative then your potential function would be just uh, gradient of the f so your integral and this would be the same so the integral of f dot dr at c is going to be just uh, is going to be just evaluation of the potential function at the end point of the intervals okay so this is it to give you one problem they guide you through it okay or sometimes you do it yourself and you get the experience so you get one of them on this quiz and on the final and so there you are most of the integrals now are going to be done by using this theorem so i give you two examples one with the vector field is in r2 and the other one is in r3 okay it's a little bit different when you find it so there you are suppose uh, this is the vector field f of x comma y is equal to x y squared i plus uh, x squared y j this is the vector field in two dimensional and uh, you have a curve and the uh, c uh, the c curve is is given by this equation the equation is r of t is equal to they give in this form 2t t parametric form and the t is between 0 and 1 so this information is given so they divide in two parts the part one Part one, they ask you to find a function. Find a function. A function f such that, okay, such that the gradient of the f is equal to the f. So you know that this means you're just checking the f is going to be a, okay, this means f is conservative already. You don't have to check it but you have to find the potential function it's the first part and the second part they usually ask for the integral 
So they asked to use the part one. Use part one. Okay, part A to evaluate the integral. So they want to make sure that you know the connection. To evaluate the integral of f dot dr c. Okay, along, along the curve, the curve c. In VOJ, you don't have to be told, you do it yourself. Okay, but in most of the problem or this, this in this section, they, they guide you through. So they want you to use this method rather than the direct method. You know that you can do it with the direct method that we did it the other day. But we want to do it in this format using the fundamental theorem of integral. Okay, there you are. Uh, find this function first. So this part one solution. Part one, you want to find a function. You know, you just find the gradient function. This is it. You know what to do. The gradient is uh, two dimensional, two variables. So the gradient is going to be f sub x and the f sub y. And your function in coordinate phase is going to be x, y squared, x squared, y. You don't have to check that this function is conservative because automatically you are going to find this. Okay, remember the way we do it. Uh, so we just form this uh, system of the equation. So the f sub x is x y squared, and the f sub y is x squared y. So these are the equation that we refer to the double equation number one and two. So we have to integrate one of them respect to the variable, and then it is going to be a constant. You take care of this for the second part. Okay, both of them are the same, so I pick the first one. I pick the first one, I integrate the respect to the x, so it's going to be f of x comma y is going to be integral of x y squared respect to the x, so I chip the y to be constant. If you integrate the respect to the respect to the x, so that gives you one half of x squared, one half of x squared y squared, so you're going to have a constant. Your constant may be a function of y. Okay, that's going to be a g of y. And so the next step is going to be, this is the one we can call it equation number three. The next step is going to be what is g of y. So you differentiate the respect to the y to be able to use the number two. Okay, so differentiate respect to the y. So f sub y is going to be, you see, so that gives you x squared y, x squared y plus g prime of y. And uh, you have it from equation number two that if, uh, okay, we have it from equation number two that f sub y is already x squared y. Okay, you compare them together. If you compare them together or let them to be equal to each other, uh, you know that these two would be canceling out. So the leftover is going to be nothing, g prime of y equal to the zero, and that would be g of y equal to the c. Then, you know, it's not going to be useful for us because we are interested in one function only. So we are going to use the, so f of x comma y is going to be simply one half of x squared y squared. You can add the constant c, but we don't usually, because we need only one function. So that function is already uh, is given to us. Okay, any question? So that's your first, uh, your job for all these problems. You have to do it automatically yourself. So this means your f is uh, conservative. Okay, so this is gonna run. So this means uh, this is it. And f is conservative. Okay, it's going to be conservative force. Now we can quickly go to the number P and use the fundamental theorem of uh, the calculus or the line integral to get the, to get our results. Okay, so in this uh, next part, are you ready? So you'd like to find the integral of f dot drc. So quickly, in a set of f, you're using the gradient of the potential function. So we say this is equal to the 
gradient of a potential function times the dr over c. And according to the fundamental theorem of uh, okay, calculus or line integral, this is going to be f of endpoint r b, okay, minus f of r of a. In this case, uh, your, give, your, your graph is going from zero to one. Okay, so this would be equal to, so this would be equal to the f of r of one endpoint minus f of r of zero. Okay, because your, your curve is going from between zero and between zero and one. So we we'll go and find the, these numbers and then you just substitute. Uh, okay, uh, so there you are. What is going to be uh, R1? You go to your function, R1. You see that was uh, 2T and T, so that gives you 2, 1. That is going to be F of R1. Okay, is R of 1, so you find F of R1. So it's going to be F of 2, 1 in your function. This is your function. If you substitute, I write it down so you know what's going on. So this is it. It's going to be, it's going to be one half x squared, two squared times one squared. So two squared would be four is going to be one half of the four, which is going to be four half is equal to two. So that's going to be f of r one at the end point. Any question? You do the same thing for zero r of zero into the function, replace t by zero, that was two t, t, so that gives you zero, zero. So your function f of r of zero is gonna be f of zero, zero. So that's it, f of zero, zero would be zero. Okay, so there you are. So your integral in question, I put it over here. So the integral of f dot dr over c is going to be simply 2 minus 0. 2 minus 0, which is equal to 2. OK, so that's it. Of course, you can find it directly, you know, get it, substitute and get it. But you will see later on that the thing's getting more complicated, and this theorem would be so useful. Any question? So this is the way we are going to operate. This is the way we're going to integrate from now on. We don't really integrate. We're just connecting these together and then using the fact that it's just it, like the, the integral is going to be just evaluation of the potential function at the endpoints and the difference. That's in two dimensional. Any question? So we have to do one in three dimensional. Okay, and you are going to have maybe one from each in your next uh, quiz. So be prepared. One of them will be given to you on those. Those twelve question on the final is this one. Okay. So what's going to be the next one? Let's take one when the vector field is going to be in. Uh, okay, in R three. What is the function? And uh, same uh, like similar problem. Suppose you have this field. The field is f of x, y, z equal to y, z, e to the x, z, i. Okay, that's first component plus e to the x, z, j second component plus x, y, x, y, e to the x, z, k. Okay, that's going to be your vector field. Okay, that's going to be your field. Force field in three-dimensional. The curve, the equation of this curve is this one, r of t. Okay, r of t is equal to that's it, uh, t squared plus one times i, that's first component, 
then uh, t squared minus one times j, the second component, and the plus t squared minus two t, okay, k. And the t is between zero and two. Okay, t between zero and two. So that's your vector field, that's your curve. So what's the question? The question is, you've been asked to evaluate this integral. Evaluate integral of f dot r, okay, the r, c, that's it. Again, you can do it directly if you like. It takes quite a while to do it. But the other part is like the one that we did. We check to see if it's going to be conservative field. If it's going to be conservative, then we can, you know, evaluate the integral by evaluation at the end point, when t equal to the zero and t equal to two, okay? So the first part is going to be, can you find a function whose gradient is equal to the f? Okay, uh, quickly we test this one. Function of three variables takes a bit more time, it's not bad. So the gradient is time is going to be f sub x, f sub y, f sub z. Okay, and the component of this uh, field is y z e to the x z e to the x z. Okay, x y e to the x z. Okay, let the coordinate function to be equal to each other to make it a system of three equation, three variables, okay? So this is what we are going to end up, f sub x, the first component, okay, which is a y z, y z e to the x z, f sub y, okay, that give you e to the x z, and the f c partial, it's a x, a y, e to the x, a z. Okay, you have a three equation, one, two, three. Quickly, you know, pick one of them and then uh, start integrating. It doesn't matter really, all of them are the same. So you may start with the first one. Start with the first one, uh, integrating in respect to the x. Integral of e to the x c would be e to the x c divided by u prime, which is going to be z. And then the constant can be a function of y and z. We use the two and the three to test it. Okay. So this is it. So start with the number one. I integrate. So the function is going to be f of x y z. And we integrate y z e to the x z. We integrate respect to the x. Okay, the yz considered to be constant. Exponential function never change, e to the xz, and you have to divide by u prime. Remember you differentiate respect to the integral respect to the x. So if you differentiate respect to the x, the derivative would be z divided by z. Then you have a constant, but your constant can be a function. That function can be a function of y and z. Any question? So I integrate respect to the x, so exponential function, exponential function, divided by u prime, you know, it's a constant, u prime, which is gonna be z. Now we get a chance to simplify the z's. So your function so far is f of x, y, z. Or it's gonna be x, y, z, which is equal to the y e to the x z plus g y z. Okay, so this is going to be your equation number number four. But you have to test to see what is g of y z. So uh, we start with the one. So we differentiate respect to the y to test it to see if there is any y in it. Okay, so differentiate with respect to the y, so that give you f sub y. Differentiate with respect to the y, so the derivative of y is one, so that's give you just e to the 
x as z, okay, plus the derivative of the g, the partial of the g respect to the respect to the y. Okay, now you bring f of y that you have from number two. From number two, you have the fact that the f of y is equal to the x z. So uh, these two would cancel out. So we get uh, we get nothing. So we get the fact that the gy a partial derivative of g respect to the y would be zero. And this is going to be zero, so the g is going to be a constant function. So g of y of z would be constant, but the constant means z because you keep that one. So this can be a function we call it h of z. Okay, so we took care of the y, so we have to take care of the z if you like. Uh, so uh, the function now, so if you go back and substitute here, so we get to the fact that f of x, y, z now is y e to the x, z, but plus the h of z. Okay, h of z. So now the question is going to be, what is h of z? Okay, differentiate respect to the z, and then use the equation number three to test it. So if you differentiate respect to the z, f sub z is going to be what? Uh, y is a constant, the uh, exponential function would be the same. Your prime, the top would be z, so that give be y is z, e to the x is z plus h prime of z. And you bring f sub c from number three. See, this is a number three. So it's going to be f sub c again, uh, which is uh, x. Okay. Uh, so I made a mistake here. I differentiate respect to the z. So that give me x, x. You see, respect to the z. And the derivative of z would be one. So that give me x, y, x, e to the x, z. And in this equation number three, I have the same thing. It's going to be x, y, e to the x, z. So these two would cancel out. So we get nothing because h prime of z would be zero. So h of z would be a constant. So it's not, not a good one. So this means your function is simply, so the conclusion is going to be the potential function x, y, z is simply y, e to the x, z. So this is going to be the potential function. Okay, so this means this force is conservative. So we can quickly using the, the fundamental theorem of calculus, borderline integral, and took care of the numbers. Okay, any question? So these are the ones that we practiced before. That's why we investigate this uh, procedure before. So now we go back to the integral and you have to just evaluate it at the end point of the curve. Endpoint of this curve is going to be zero and zero and two. Okay, so this is going to be the way we are going to evaluate our integral. Okay, so we say, okay, the integral of f dot dr. Okay, we already talked about this, but we can write it down for you so they can see it. Is a gradient of the f dr over c. So it's going to be f of the endpoint, r of b minus f of r of a, the endpoint of the interval. At this interval, uh, t was between zero and two. So this is going to be f of r of two minus f of r of zero. So go to the curve and get these numbers. Uh, remember the equation of the curve is this one. R of t is uh, components of t squared plus one for the x, t squared minus one for the y, and the t squared minus two t for the z. That's the equation of R of t. Evaluate at these two points. Okay. So if you put the zero R of zero would be simply but it's a one, negative one and a zero. That's R of zero and R of two. 
if we would, r of two, two squared would be four, four and one would be five. Two squared is four, four minus one would be three. And that gives two squared four minus four. So that give you, that give you zero. Okay, so this is it. Now I'm going to evaluate the function that we find f of x, y, z. We see the function was y e to the x z. That was the, the function, I just double check it. Yes, y e to the x z. Now evaluate it at those points and then we'll be done. So there you are, f of r of two would be changing to the f of five, five, three, zero. So y is three, z is zero, so that give e to the zero, which is going to be three. Okay, we substitute here. Then f of r of zero. R of zero is one, negative one and zero. So substitute here, y is a negative one, negative, okay, e to the, again, it's gonna be e to the zero because of the z is zero. So that give me negative one. Okay, so eventually your integral of f dot dr over c is going to be three minus negative one, which is four, nice. Again, you can do it directly if you like, but this method is much, much easier. And if you say I can, then we will see later on, I give you something that you may, may not be able to find it forever. But it's a very nice method. It's a very strong method that we're going to have. Okay, any question? So now I've got the idea. This integral is a line integral, so it depends on the curve that's given to you. Okay, and the best way to do it is if the force is conservative. If it's going to be conservative, you just find the potential function and the, fun the result of integral is just evaluation of the potential function at the endpoints of your curve, which is the same as the endpoint of the interval in the case of the function of one variable. Now, what's going to be the next step? The next step is, you see this curve that we pick over here? Sometimes you may have different choices. You see, you want to go from one point to the other point. You have different choices, like, you know, the example that we talked about the other day. You want to go to San Diego, so you can go through 15 or you can go through the five. Uh, okay, so the question is going to be, uh, is there going to be any, you know, relationship or, of course, you know, if you go different paths, you may get different, different value for your integral. But, uh, if this integral, you see for each path that we pick, we go from one point A to one point B. So the initial and the terminal points are the same. If you go uh, through different paths from these two points, San Diego and you know, Oceanside, and if the value of this integral is going to be the same, in that case, we say that oh, this integral is independent of the path. Independent of the path means you can pick any path you like, uh, okay? Of course, if you have been given a choice, you can pick any path you like. Of course, you are going to pick a curve, which is very easy to go. The easiest curve is a straight line. If you pick the straight line, you don't have to find R of T, you know, the initial the initial points and the, and the terminal points stay, stay the same and you can find your integral right away. So we're going to investigate is there any condition that you can impose to find out that your integral is independent of the paths? Of course, the condition you will see that is the fact that this force must be, okay, conservative. If it's going to be conservative, then you get independent of the paths, okay? So there are a couple of easy but quite interesting conclusion. So I'm going to list it for you, and then we come back and we do much, much more problem. Okay, to get these these numbers. Okay, any question? Let me just explain it. And that's a big deal, of course, independent of the paths. And 
you are going to be given one question on this one. So let's uh, make sure to understand the terms. So what is this idea of independence of paths, they call it in your book, or path independent? Okay, independence of path. Care. Because that's a line integral, okay, that's the case. Now, this is a situation, as I talk about it, if f is going to be, if the vector field f is going to be a continuous vector field, a continuous, okay, it's going to be a continuous vector field. Continuous vector field with the domain D, with, you know, with domain D. Is a function that's going to be defined on the domain D, then this uh, the line integral, okay? Then uh, the, the line integral, the line integral f dot dr over c is going to be independent of paths, is independent of path, the way we are going to go. Uh, okay, if if you go with uh, two, two different direction, where between two fixed points, the integral happens to be the same. So if f dot dr over c1 is going to be equal to the f dot dr over c2. Okay, where's going to be C1? So you see, this is the point A, ocean side, and it's going to be the other point. And this is one of them. Somebody may pick this one. Direction, you know, the I5, somebody else may go to another point. Okay, so this is going to be the C1, and this is going to be C2. But the initial points and the terminal points must be the same. Okay, so this is going to be true for, for any two, for any any two paths. Okay, any two paths C1 and C2, of course, with the same in the domain that you have. Okay, in the domain that have, of course, the same. It have the same initial and terminal point. Okay, initial, initial and terminal points. Okay, so if this is going to be the case, we say that this integral is independent of the paths. So when it's going to be independent of the paths, of course, we can pick the best one. That's, a, that's the one, the best path. And so uh, easily can be proved that, easily can be proved that F, you know that because if you're checking different, if you, if this F is going to be conservative, this is not going to be, you know, the potential function is always the lowercase F. So in these two direction, the integral would be difference of the value of the potential function at the endpoints, which are the same. So we get this one free that if F is conservative, is conservative, then Okay, then you know that the potential function is going to be, gradient of potential function is going to be equal to the F. And uh, what is the integral? You see F dot dr over the C1 is going to be simply F of R of B minus F of R of A. It doesn't matter. F dot dr over C2. Because the potential function is a potential function and the endpoints are the same because you see, this is the condition that we have. So this is gonna be F of R of B again, minus F of R of A. So basically this means the integral of F dot dr C1 is the same as the F dot dr C2. Okay, nice uh, conclusion. The conclusion is that, sorry, the conclusion is that if f is conservative, then uh, the integral line integral is independent of paths. 
Okay, so the conclusion is, so if this is going to be the case, so the line integral, the line integral in this case is independent, dependent of path. Okay, so the conclusion is, as you can see, that if f is conservative, nice, you can go from any direction you like. Therefore, the line integral of a conservative, the line integral. Okay, the line integral of conservative Okay, of conservative vector fields, vector fields are independent, are going to be independent. Okay, independent of path. So as soon as you know this fact, then you can pick the best one. Anyway, so this means you 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 know you, you have to be given only the uh, initial points and the terminal points to be able uh, to do it. Of course, you know since it's conservative, you already got the you already got the potential function. Then you be able you be able to do it. Okay, so it's one argument, and we are going to see the application in a minute. About uh, something else uh, for the interpretation that we're going to have for this course and for future. When you are in physics or those, uh, depends on those fields that we talk about it, uh, each of these would mean a specific, would have a specific meaning. Depends on whatever you have, what type of force it is. So there are different interpretations for this one. And uh, when you go work with the complex uh, functions, we talk about the contour integral the other day, uh, there is a great theorem over there that we call it the Cauchy theorem. The Cauchy theorem is going to be if you have a closed path. The closed path is going to be the path that, you know, the, the, the initial point and the terminal points are going to be the same. So you start from one point and you come back to it. If you are going to be in a closed path, that's a great uh, theorem of a Cauchy, we call it Cauchy theorem. And that will give you the, the fact that the line integral is always equal to the zero. And it's, it's a great theorem, it's a nice proof, you know, if you are a math major, uh, the proof is, is long, but it's very nice. But uh, that observe, you know, we can observe it over here easily for this type of, uh, of course, function that we're going to have. So that's why we are going to talk about it, close path, because it's the one that we're going to use for our final case. Okay, so we get it free here, of course. The free is going to be. So let's uh, continue with this observation, cross path. And this uh, kind of <coughs> similar or, you know, result to the, like the Cauchy in the complex analysis. Okay, so a curve. I just finish with this one. Then I give you an example. A curve. C is close. C is close. If you know, if you start from somewhere and come back, it's close. If it's uh, uh, terminal points, okay. If it is a terminal, if it is a terminal, terminal point coincide. If you like, it's going to be the same. Coincides with its uh, okay, its initial point. Initial point. Okay, and this means I E if you like R of A is going to be equal to the R of B if you like because this is what will happen when it's closed. <clears throat> okay, so this means, you know, you start from the point A, for example. This is gonna be the point A, and then, uh, you know, you come back. This is it. 
So we will form one point and come back again. So the initial point and the terminal points happen to be equal to equal to each other in, the, in that case. Okay, so uh, what uh, we are going to do is uh, going to be, so if you have the integral, if you want to find the integral of the f dot uh, dr at c, okay, in this case, it's going to be f of r of b minus f of r of a, but both of them are the same because they are equal to each other. So in that case, you get zero here. So that gives you a theorem. I told you this, uh, this is going to be proof in more general setting in mathematics or in complex analysis, that uh, if you have a conservative force, then this integral is going to be zero. Different way to express it. And this is the way it's in your book. You say that the, the integral of f dot, the line integral is independent. Okay, independent of paths in the domain D, even only if, even only if integral of f dot dr or c is zero. Okay, for any path or any any close path, of course, for any close path. Close path in, okay, in D. But basically this means really, as I talk about it, if, if it's going to be conservative force, in that case, these integrals are going to be equal to the, uh, equal to, equal to the zero. Or basically, if it's going to be conservative, then, uh, it's going to be your integral is going to be independent of the independent of the paths. Okay, any question? Now, uh, before I give you a break, I just uh, give you one question, one example, which is the conclusion of this argument. And you have uh, several of these problems in your assignments, and you have two on that practice quiz uh, number four and your final review. So you must know this. This is the conclusion of the independent paths. So this is the way we are going to test you. Look at this problem. Let's see what is special about it in this problem when you compare it with the other. You see, this is uh, one case. Uh, they give you, uh, let's see, there are going to be two. Okay, I'll give you this one. You see, you want to show that show that this integral, integral r is a line integral and you have uh, 2x uh, e to the negative y dx, different format, the format that we talked about the other day, plus 2y minus x squared e to the negative y dy. Okay, uh, this is, is uh, given to you. And they ask you to show that this is, is independent. It is uh, independent. Independent of paths. Okay, and then evaluate and evaluate the integral. the integral when or where C is any path, any path from, okay, any path from one zero to three one. You see? Read it carefully to see what's the difference between this problem and the other one that you did. Okay, in the other problem that we did, of course, you know that we just taking the function inside. 
they just give you in the form of the you know mdx and the ndy these are going to be the component of your function okay so you have a vector field you have a vector field in uh, two dimensional and uh, you want to prove that this is uh, going to be independent of paths and we will talk about it this is going to be independent of paths if this force is conservative so when it's going to be conservative then you'll be able to find the integral you can find the integral by applying the potential function into the endpoint of the curve but look at the curve in the other problem the equation of the curve was given to you but in this problem the curve is free for any curve you like and you have no equation you see that's the difference between this problem and the other ones you see they say where c is any path any path from one zero to three one so you have to realize that since your your force is uh, your is conservative when it's conservative okay it's independent of paths since independent of paths this means if you pick any path you like the result's going to be the same so what's going to be the easiest path between two points the easiest path that you can pick between two points is a straight line and the equation of a straight line so you know when it's a straight line this is already the end point of the interval and you'll be able to find it okay so that's the advantage of this type of problems and the advantage is this any path so you don't have any specific path in the previous problem you did have a specific path and then you, you know you find that the equation of the paths substitute to get it but they say any when you prove this is independent any would be your option anything you like i like the easiest one a straight line then a straight line is just a substitution and you get it right away okay so you have this group of problems quite a lot and you have to pay attention to you know to take care of it and uh, this is it uh, so the solution is going to be first that uh, you have to identify the, the function and uh, they get those potential function in this form is a pdx dy that we talk about it so you can check this as a component of your function you may call this one m and you may call this one n so this is going to be the coordinate function that you have okay so you are going to suppose the, the vector field that you have is this one f of x comma y which is going to be 2x e to the negative y comma 2y minus x square e to the negative y it's going to be a potential function so what you have to do is uh, you have to show that one should one should show that or one should find basically find a potential function potential function f okay for the you know for the for the vector field for for f that's it so basically means uh, this is it okay you have to prove this is potential okay it's going to be conservative force and automatically you have you need that potential function okay so that would be easy it's just uh, two-dimensional so that's it uh, so this is going to be f sub x f sub y and this is uh, 2x e to the negative y 2y minus x square e to the negative y go for it a system of two equation so that give us a 2x e to the negative y and that will give us f sub y which is a 2y minus uh, x squared e to the negative y. That's the same procedure that we did. It's just a one, two. Integrate respect to the x, which is easy. If of two, integral of 2x would be x squared and come back. Okay, start with the one. So f of x comma y would be integral of a 2x e to the negative y in respect to the x 
So uh, that gives you x squared, okay? And you integrate it. So that gives you x squared y. x squared e to the negative y constant. Your constant can be a function of y. Okay, so you have to check the y. So, and there you are. So the question is going to be, what is g of y? So we better differentiate it respect to the x. So f sub x, sorry, respect to the y. So I want to use the second one, y. Derivative of e to the negative y would be negative e to the negative y. So that gives it negative x squared e to the negative y. <coughs> and that would be j prime of y. But from the equation number two, you already got the f of y partial respect to the y. It's a two y minus x squared e to the negative y. You compare them together, these two would cancel out. So the conclusion is going to be g prime of y is equal to the two y. Okay, we let them equal to each other and we drop the, okay, the common terms. So that's easy, you integrate it and your g of y would be simply, okay, so integrated g of y would be simply y squared. It's gonna be y squared plus c, but we don't need the c. So we go back and we substitute, we have a potential function. So f of x comma y is x squared e to the negative y. Okay, x squared e to the negative y, g of y, which is y, <coughs> which is y squared. <coughs> okay, so this means uh, everything. This means this uh, uh, f is conservative. So the integral is independent of the paths. So why not pick the easy path? Okay, any question? So continue. So we have to explain it. You are going to explain that the same. So F is conservative. <coughs> Sorry. F is con conservative and so and the line integral is going to be independent of paths. Independent of pet. Okay, since independent of pets, we can pick any pet you like. So I pick the easiest one. So I pick the C to be just a straight line. So suppose C is a line segment. Okay, it's gonna be line segment. segment from, uh, okay, from one zero to two one. You don't need a, you know, just parameterizing it, but you can do it if you like. So if you want to find the equation of the line as usual is going to be a point. So it's not one zero plus T times the difference two minus zero, one minus zero. So that give it R of T, which is gonna be equal to, it's a one zero and this is a two one. So your equation parameterizing into this, one plus two T and zero plus one, which is one. Sorry, which is T. So that's your equation. It's in, you don't need it because the initial points would be would be the same thing for this one. Okay, so uh, I picked this one. So what is the integral? Integral of the F dot dr over C is gonna be simply, the T is of course between zero and one. So that integral is simply F of R of one 
minus f of r of zero. That's it, r of one and zero are gonna be exactly the one that we did, r of one is just uh, the point that we have, okay? If you put the t equal to one, let's just make sure you get this one right. Uh, I got this at two, so it's gonna be one plus two t and, did I miss anything? Sorry, this is two minus one, two minus one. Because you know those components, two minus one. So that could be one zero, so that would be one one. That's a one one. So this would be simply one plus t and t. I was surprised because I should get the same number. Okay, so because the you know the endpoint must be two one. So that gives you two one. You don't need even to do these operations when it's a straight line. You can pick the points right away. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, there you are. So f of uh, two one, what is the f of x? Okay, the function, uh, what was the function is this one, f of x, y was x squared e to the negative y plus y squared. Now we substitute, so f of uh, r1 would be f of two and one. So x is equal to two, two is squared, e to the negative one. Okay, e to the negative one, and plus y squared, which is a one. Okay, it's a kind of four over e plus one. And f of r of zero, which is f of one zero. If you substitute x equal to one, e, that's give you one times e to the zero, okay, e to the zero plus, uh, plus zero. So that gives you one. So the integral f dot dr over c is gonna be four over e plus one minus one. So the result four over e, that give you the result of the integral. You see, you don't have the path, but you are able to find the integral. So let's make it quite interesting. And this is due to the fact that the F is conservative. Since F is conservative, so this is, you know, this will happen. Again, when you put it in, in the context of the special vector field, they would mean something, all of them. And it's quite, uh, quite interesting. Okay, uh, so let's have a break. And uh, we come back. Uh, then uh, what we can do is uh, going to give you a couple of more examples first. Then uh, you can even uh, uh, you know, simplify it a little bit more. Okay, so it's 12.05. So I'll give you 15 minutes, 12.20, you come back and we give you a couple of more examples to be able to get this one. And then we may talk about Green's theorem. The things that make things so much easier. Okay, it's a great theorem in calculus three. Okay, so see you in 15 minutes.
Okay, so let's go back to see what else can we do. Uh, one uh, warning only is uh, the case that, uh, you see, I was able to do this one because the force was conservative. On all these problems, since it's conservative, then I can uh, use the fundamental term of uh, calculus to take care of it. But uh, be careful. Uh, sometimes uh, if the force is not going to be conservative, then you should be prepared to go with the you know, classic method of finding this. So I just give you one uh, more example, and especially independent of the paths. So uh, again, if F is going to be conservative, then your integral is going to be independent of the paths. And in that case, uh, uh, if you have a closed curve, okay, the integral would be zero. So make sure you remember this. This uh, example, I should give you this, because uh, I think I have a similar one in your assignment. And it's, the, it's not bad to know that if we get the situation that we cannot use this method, always remember, you go back and you do the job with the classic one, okay? So this is a kind of uh, example to remind you that uh, you can do it all the time. And so this is the question. Uh, we want to evaluate this integral. <clears throat> okay, evaluate the integral. It's, it's a line integral and its a function is y in the form of the y squared dx plus, okay, x dy is a differential form. Okay, and where? Now they are going to give two different paths. <clears throat> the first part, you see the first part, uh, this uh, C is, you know, the curve is called C1, is the line segment, okay? It's gonna be the line segment, the line uh, segment, line segment from, okay, from the point in negative five and negative three to the point uh, zero two. That's the first part. Okay, in the second part, in the second part, they change the curve. So they call it C2. Okay, C2, now C2 is, is, a, is a curve. So C2 is the arc or part of, is the arc of the parabola. Okay, of the, Parabola. Okay, the parabola with this equation, x equal to the four minus y squared. Okay, from the points are the same, you know, the same, the same initial and the terminal point from negative five, three to the point zero and two. Okay, it's a two different paths, C1 and the C2. <clears throat> You want to do it. So uh, the first thing uh, you may think about it that is, it's, you know, it's, it's all right to check, to check to see if this force is going to be conservative. You know that you have a force in two dimensional. So if this is going to be conservative, then at different paths, you get the same number. So you don't have to do it twice. Okay, so it's not bad to check, to see if this is going to be the case. For all the problems that we did so far, it was the case but uh, you may not get it, okay? So the solution is going to be, introduce the function, okay? So your function is going to be, suppose, in this format, the first component is a two-dimensional, okay? So function of two variables. So the, the components are going to be y squared and x. Okay, so this is what we have. Then you want to check to see if it's going to be conservative. You can check the condition if you like. Remember when it's a two, uh, if, if this form, it's easy to, to check the conditions. Uh, so uh, remember, you can call this one M and N. I know it would be fine using different notation. You call this one 
and m is n squared and the n is x. Remember this for the two variables. So uh, we check the, the partial respect to the, we check to see round m round y, which is going to be equal to the two y. And this is going to be round n round x, which is equal to one. As you can see, they are not equal to each other. So they are not going to be equal to each other. And that will tell us that the F is not going to be conservative. Okay, F is not conservative. Remember this is was the case, the condition for the, the condition for the function of two variables to be conservative was the, the fact that if M sub Y is equal to the NX. Okay, in this case, they are not. Okay, so, uh, this is not going to be conservative, so the integral is not. So the, the line integral, the line integral is not, okay, is not going to be independent of paths. Independent of paths. So this means the, the value of the integral for the first one. And for the second one, both of them are going to be different. And then, of course, you cannot uh, use the fundamental theorem of uh, okay of calculus. So what we're going to do is just go ahead, write them and write it straight on. So what we do, you are going to find the uh, okay. So we go to the part one. You have to find the parametric equation of the curve and just substitute, get the result as we did it the other day. Okay. So this is the warning. Just be be careful. And not a big deal, we can do it. We say, okay, what is the C1? So uh, the C1 in this case is a straight line going from the point uh, negative five, three to the zero two. So find the parametric equation of this line. Remember the initial is going to be R of T is equal to your initial point you write on vector form is negative five and negative three plus uh, t times the difference components. Remember, it is going to be zero minus negative five comma two minus negative three. Okay. Then you simplify it. That gives you negative five and negative three plus t times. So that give you a five, negative, negative, positive, two plus three would be five, two. Okay, so you add them together. So your R of T is gonna be the first component is gonna be negative five plus five T. And the second component would be negative three plus five T. So that give you the equation of your curve. And of course, when T is between zero and one. It's very, we you know, this is the way we write the, uh, okay, we write the parametric equation of, of a line. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next page. Any question? So you know that the, the function is the differential form. So I have to find the x, y, d, y, d, x to continue. So I bring it up here. And so this is a situation that we have. And so. For the component, your x of t, your x is negative five plus five t. Okay, and your y is equal to the negative three plus five t. That's going to be your x and the y. You have to find the differential of the x. So the d of x is going to be five d of t. Okay, and the d of y is going to be Okay, same thing, five D of T. You can go to the integral, directly substitute and get the job. So this is the integral, Y squared DX plus X DY. Substitute directly, your T goes from zero to one. Y squared, this is Y, negative three plus five T all squared. DX, DX is five DT. Okay, plus X, this is X and negative five plus five T times a DY, which is five DT. Okay, you have to do the algebra and then integrate it. 
Okay, so I'm going to square this. It's going to be zero to one. Okay, I have the five times, five times. A square of the first one, nine, twice of the first time, second, six, 30, minus 30 T plus 25 T squared. That's the first one. And over here, I multiply the five, five times five, it's going to be negative 25 plus 25 T. And everything would be DT. I just square this one. Then I have to multiply by five and simplify. It's going to be zero to one. So it's going to be 45 minus 150 T plus uh, 125 T squared minus 25 plus 25 T DT. Okay, I just uh, uh, going on to get these, uh, these uh, integrals. Okay, so what I have uh, so far, you know, simplified and integrated zero to one. So I have 125, 125 uh, T squared. And for the T is uh, minus 125 again, 125 T. And for the numbers, uh, I'm going to have uh, 20. Okay, that's gonna be 20 and everything DT. I just combine the like terms. Integrated respect to the T, 125 T cube over three minus 125 T squared over two plus 20 T over two going from zero to one. Okay, uh, this uh, uh, would be, you know, if you substitute the, the one, that gives you 125 third minus 125 half and the 20 half. And if we put the zero, we get nothing. Okay, get the common denominator, simplify it. So the common denominator would be six. So that gives you two times 125 at 250. Okay, three times 125 at 375 and the plus 60. And if you simplify that, give a negative, negative five, six. So the integral over the, okay, over the C1 would be equal to the negative five, six. So I just use the classic method just to, to, to find it. Okay, that's the first part, any question? So uh, we are prepared for it, okay? So if we have to go back to the classic method to do it, now we are going to do it on the C2 and show that the numbers are different. Okay. So what was the C2? The C2 was a, okay. So I go into the part B. So along the curve C2. So what is the C2? C2 is a part of the parabola X equal to the four minus Y squared. Okay, and uh, this is again from negative five, uh, negative three up to the zero and two. Again, you can parameterize this one. You can stay with the X and the Y if you like, but the way I do it, I check the Y, I let the Y to be equal to T. So my X would be equal to the four minus T squared. Okay, so this is a parameterization. So I have to pick the T, so I get, give us the, the first point. Okay, so uh, this is it. So Y would be T equal to the three, it's gonna be between negative three and uh, between two to get this initial and the terminal points. Question. So do the same thing, find the DX, DT and continue. So dy dt would be dt, dx would be negative 2t dt. Go to the function and substitute again and integrate it. Okay, so this is the integral in question on C2. Uh, integral was y squared dx plus x dy. Substitute. Integral would be from negative three to two. 
y is squared, that's easy because the y is t, so that gives you t squared, times the dx is a negative 2t dt, then plus x, x, x is 4 minus t squared times dy, dy and the dt are the same. Okay, simplify it a little bit. It's a negative 3 to 2. So that gives me negative uh, 2t cubed. And that would be a plus 4 minus uh, t squared, then the dt. Nothing to be simplified. So we have to integrate it. Okay, so it's going to be negative 2t to the fourth over 4 plus 4t minus t cube over, over three, evaluated from negative three to two. Okay, we can substitute together. I'll give you the final answer so you can check it. So the final answer is 245. 245 over, over six, okay? So the conclusion is that, as you can see, the integral f dot dr or c1 is not equal to the f dot dr or c2. And we are not surprised because f is not conservative. So this is a kind of example that show you that for all this procedure, your, you see your force must be conservative to be able to do the, to do the job. Okay, so so it's nice. You can you know can take care of many many integrals really right away to get these numbers. And the conclusion that if the force is going to be conservative and uh, you have a closed curve, then the integral along that closed curve is going to be equal to the equal to the zero. Okay, any question? Now, what else can we do? Okay, there's a uh, one last thing for this uh, type of integrations that we're going to consider. That's a great deal, that last thing. Now, what is this one? Look at this integral that you did. So the nicest part was when the force was conservative. When the force is not conservative, as you can see, it's uh, quite a lot to be able to find these integrals. But uh, this type of integrations can be simplified sometimes, even if the force is not conservative. But it can be simplified, but if you can, if you would like to do it on the on the closed curve. So the idea is going to be, we are going to find the integral, the line integral over a path. That path is a closed curve. But we know that the function is not conservative, of course. If the function is conservative, that integral is zero right away. But if f is not going to be conservative, but c is going to be closed, we have a great method to do it. And that great method is called Green's theorem. Okay, that's the price of this, this part of the course really. So I'm going to explain that one for you. Then you are done with all the line integrals. Okay, so let's talk about it. And then we have only one more type of integration to it. Green's theorem is, it's quite interesting. Again, this is just for a function of two variables. Uh, then uh, you can extend this one uh, in the kind of the three-dimensional, the results can be called a Stokes theorem. Again, these are all foundation of complex analysis. If you bring a function of a co complex variable, then that Green's theorem would tell you, uh, you know, would be a great deal for you over there. Okay, so, it's 15.4, great section. We give one question for, from this and you will see in a minute. That's such an easy method, but you have to recognize it. That's the important part. Okay, everybody's ready. Now, uh, what I would like to do is, I don't like to get uh, give you lots of details, but we don't want to lose. There are a couple of so-called topological expressions that we use. This uh, topological expression is the one that, uh, for example, we talk about these uh, curves, paths. Uh, so 
Uh, topology, of course, is a part of mathematics, is uh, similar to the geometry. But the difference is that uh, in, in geometry, so, you know, you cannot change the, the shape of the curves that you have. You see, triangle is always a triangle, and the circle is always a triangle. But in topology, it's like, you know, you have a, if you have a, if you have a circle over here, you can think that the you know the material that you use is a rubber if you like if it's going to be a rubber i can check this one i can change it i can you know push them together confirm it compress it uh, you know i make it this one okay from that that circle so we are going to have this is the way it's the mathematics which go on after because you're just doing a classic one because you're intending you know you're just focusing on the euclidean geometry and quite a lot so there are some expressions that we're going to borrow from topology to get through this theorem. Okay, but the, the easiest term would be enough for you. But I just give you a couple of them before giving you the Green's theorem. Okay. So I prepare you the terms that we use and then the greens. Okay, that's it. Green's theorem. We give the instruction on the test. And we ask you to apply Green's theorem to find the integral for S. Okay, it's going to be integral uh, of a force on a closed path. But of course, your force is not conservative. Then you have a choice. You can do it uh, directly or you can use the Green's theorem. But I will give you those examples that it would be sometimes uh, very messy to do it directly. Okay, okay, let's get, uh, let's uh, give you a short some of the easy expression from uh, topology. Okay, we need some terms that uh, connected domains. If you don't like it, you know, you are not going to lose anything, but at least a little bit, because when we write the statement of the theorem, it depends on this idea. Connected domain. Uh, so when we say the domain is connected, this means this domain is one piece only. Okay, one piece. Uh, sometimes we say it's a path connected. Path connected means uh, if you pick any two points into your domain, there is a path between these two. So if you are going to be, if domain is going to be a circle, this is a path connected. Because if I pick any two points over here, so I can go from one point to the other point, I'm going to stay here. But if you give me two circle, two disjoint circle, I can't do it. They are disconnected because there is a one point and the one point and they are going to be disconnected. Okay. It's a very uh, precise expression in topology, but we need a little bit. Okay. So let's give you the definitions and the least uh, terms that we need. Okay. To get through the Green theorem. If D is a subset, D is a subset of R2. Okay, or R3. Then uh, D as a set is said to be, okay, is said to be connected, connected or path connected. I'll go with the path connected, it's easier to explain. I also teach that, you know, those uh, different type of the topology courses but I have to be brief in this case, okay? So D is said to be connected or path connected if every pair of, pair of points, okay, in the domain can be connected to each other, okay? Can be connected Okay, by a path, by a path in Indy. So we say it's a path connected. Okay, so the examples of the path connected, easy one. The first one, as we talk about, you know, the, the circle, this is a circle, for example. If this is gonna be your domain, so it's a path connected. So if you pick any two points, you can go from one point to the other one. 
Okay, and the other one is if you get this domain, okay, see, this is a path connected one. It's a path connected because, you know, if you pick any two points, you can go from to the other one. So these are going to be T is connected. And this is also is connected. And the easy example of a disconnected is your domain is going to be consists of two separated circle, two pieces, if you like, two disjoint pieces. Uh, you cannot go from this point to the other points. So T is disconnected. Disconnected. So if it's going to be connected, you never be able to break your D into the, okay, the union of two subsets, if you like, two disjoint subsets. And so in this case, you know that there is, there is no paths, okay? If you pick the point A and the B, so we can say that there is, there is no path, okay, between between A and A and B is the one. Okay, so this is one expression that we need to know. The other expression that uh, I just give you this if you want to go inside these uh, details and read it for yourself, but otherwise we don't need much. Okay, we have something we call it simply connected. Simply connected uh, curve, curves or domains. What is this uh, simply connected curves or domain? If you have a, a curve, okay, so each curve would have an equation, you know, that R of T. If your function R of T is going to be one to one, you may have seen it, okay, from algebra or uh, one to one means at different time, you are going to be at different points. So if you move, you know, you are not going to get back to the original points. You never cut the curve if you like. So a curve, okay, a curve with equation, with equation R of T is called, Okay, a simple curve, a simple curve. If uh, R of T as a function is one to one, is invertible if you like, one to one. One to one means at different time. So if uh, T1 is not equal to the T2, then R of T1 is not equal to the R of T2. Okay, so this curve does not intersect itself, if you like, okay? So C, C is a simple curve. Okay, it's gonna be a simple curve if it does not, Okay, does not intersect itself, intersect, intersects itself. So for example, look at this one. This path is a simply connected one. So at different time, you are going to be at different position in this curve. Okay, so this is going to be a simple curve. Simple curve. I look at this one. Suppose you travel from this side. Okay, this is your direction. You see this point here? At two different times, you are going to arrive at these points. 
One says when you get to this one from this direction, and then a few seconds, you come back again. So we get two different times. You see, you get the T1, which is not equal to the T2, but R of T1 is equal to the R of T2. Okay, so this curve is not going to be simply connected. Okay, the curve, the curve is not simple. Okay, so these are going to be one, you know, if you want to read this further to get those numbers, you need a little bit of this definition to get to know them. Even if you take uh, those complex analysis one or the advanced calculus, they have to explain it. But again, we're going to restrict ourselves to the case that we'll be able to get to the through this Green's theorem without any proof. Okay, now one more expression that will take us to the Green's theorem. Are done. The expression is going to be boundary of the domain. Again, this is a topological expression, the terms. What is the boundary? Boundary. Boundary of a domain. Boundary of the domain. You see, if, if, if this is going to be a domain, you see, this is going to be a domain. Your domain. There's going to be a closed curve. You see, this is your domain and your points are here. This domain can be enclosed by its boundary. So the boundary is going to be a curve. You see, it's going to be a curve C. This is going to be the curve C. The curve C is enclosing all the points of the D. We call it the boundary, like the you know, usual expression that you're going to have. So the domain is D, C is the boundary of the D. This is the way you denote it. You say C is boundary of the D, you know, in just in case you see it. Okay, so C is going to be, C is the boundary. A boundary of the domain Okay, of the domain D. So in this case, we write, okay, we write C equal to boundary of D. Okay, C equal to the, the boundary of D. The boundary of D. So, you know, if you have a circle, again, you know, around the circle, you get these, these boundaries. So we have enough terms to be able to express what is the Green's theorem. So what's the idea? I repeat it again. The idea is you want to find the line integral, line integral of a given function on a curve. That function is not conservative. That function is not conservative, but that curve is close. See, that curve is going to be boundary of this domain. You see, the boundary of this domain is close. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to find the integral of a function on this boundary, the line integral. So the Green's theorem will tell you that in order to find this line integral, you can change it into a double integral in this domain. What does it mean? You see, this is the great Green's theorem. Green's theorem. And you will see the application, such an easy one. So, what is the Green's theorem? Let C be, let C be a closed, must be a closed curve, remember. A closed curve. Okay, in the plane, in two dimensional only. Okay, three dimensional would be a Stokes theorem. In the plane, and let 
D, D, B, the region, it's going to be the region bonded, bonded by C. Bonded by C means C is, so C is the boundary of D. So this means C is equal to the boundary of D. Okay, is the boundary, the boundary of D, that's it. So you have one domain, okay, one domain, then you have a cross curve. That cross curve would bond, is a boundary, would bond or enclose your your domain, whatever it is. Oh, if it is going to be the case, now bring the function. If p and q, they are a function of two variables, p and q, have continuous partial derivative, have continuous, continuous partial derivatives. Continuous partial derivatives on the domain in D. Then that's it. Look at the theorem now. So this means if you want to find the line integral of the function p dx plus q dy, of course you can do it directly. You have the parameter, you know, you parameterize this c and you'll be able to do it. But this will tell you that the green student will tell you that you can change this one into a double integral. This is a connection between the line integral and double integral. Double integral. Double integral on the domain D. And you know the connection between these two. This is going to be the domain and this is going to be the boundary of the domains. But uh, this is it. The function would be changed into round Q. Round x minus around p around y then the da you know that the da means differential of the area dx dy depends on the domain and the way you are going to write it down to be able to be able to find it okay so uh, this is the green theorem if you want to find the line integral you can change it to the double integral but uh, the double integral, you need this domain to be able to do it. So you look at the look at the curve. This is the boundary of your domain. So the points inside this area that you enclose, that is your boundary. Then you go for it and you find this uh, this integral. Uh, remember, if uh, if the function was if the force was conservative, remember, it was conservative. These two are equal to each other. Remember, we call it M and N, but I just call it P and Q because of the nature of this theorem. So if this is going to be conservative, these two are going to be equal to each other, and that gives you zero. So this theorem is going to be no use when you, you get a conservative, okay, uh, conservative force. So it's a kind of extension of what we did. Uh, so this is going to be the case. Uh, there are a different way to write it down. So sometimes they write it down in this form. So the line integral, I just show you because you may see it. So that's going to be PDX plus QDY. Okay, they, they use this, uh, okay, this notation, contour integral of the line integral. So in some books you will see it, so it's going to be the same thing. And of course the double integral is going to be the same. Okay, round Q, remember Q is the second one. Round Q, round X, minus round P, round Y, integrating respect to the X or Y. And basically, this is going to be the case, you see. This is going to be, so you have the C, you see this is going to be the C. That's a boundary of the domain. So the inside of the C. Okay, these are going to be your D. As you can see, C is the boundary of the D to be able to be able to do it. Great theorem, it's not difficult to prove. We don't have time. Sometimes I prove it in the case of the face-to-face, -face, but sometimes we won't get to the Green's theorem. 
let me let me teach okay so make sure that you know the understand the statement of the theorem and of course the application and how we're going to use it any question so remember if your force is going to be conservative there's no use for this one because as soon as you get a conservative force these two are equal to each other we get a zero because this c is always close when you use the green theorem it's going to be close and that theorem in complex analysis that i told you cauchy theorem and they use uh, this you know they extend the green's theorem and they prove that if you have a function of a complex variable which is going to be analytic it means you know it's uh, it's differentiable and for any closed curve that integral is equal to the zero and the way they use it is exactly this theorem and you know they impose uh, this condition that we call it over here for the conservative force they have something they call it cauchy euler conditions so they are all connected to each other they are not going to be separated okay so i should give you an example to see how we're going to do it and how easy it is to apply it we give you one and we ask you apply the green's theorem to do the, the theorem for us and it's going to be such a function that you better not try it to do any other methods because if it's going to be easy function so you know that it's not not a big deal to find this integral integral of a you know p d x q d y if it's going to be easy we can do it but you will see that there are going to be very complicated type of functions that you may not be able to find it if you go from the other sides okay so just very interesting result really all together these two sections are the best part of your course let's see why we just very proud of this that there you are you see you want to evaluate this integral line integral if you use this one this means the c is close just use it in case you see it okay that's it the integral is 3y minus e to the sine x okay dx plus 7x plus ooh, y to the fourth plus one okay dy you want to find this integral okay what is the c just a circle where c is what is the circle the circle x squared plus y squared less than or equal to the name that's it so as you can see your circle is containing the okay cutting cutting any point inside and the and the point on the boundaries that you're going to have you see this integral if you want to do it directly good luck because you know you have to parameterize the circle okay it's not bad you get sine cosine bad so you may be able to do it or you know it takes time or sometimes you may not be able to take that integral that you have over there okay but uh, we are going to use the green's theorem okay we give it a hint on the test apply the green's theorem or for this one you have to apply the green's theorem so what you have to do you have to create the create the d for us okay so this is the boundary of the d you see this is the solution so just think about it this is your curve this is where you want to integrate okay is the circle the radius three one two three one two three one two three so this is a situation that we have okay in this direction so uh, uh, as you can see so if you pick your domain to be exactly the same thing you see if you pick the domain to be all the points inside the circle plus the points on the circle then the boundary would be what the boundary would be just this c that you have you see this c would be your your boundary so you are, what you are going to do you are going to introduce your d the domain you say oh suppose i pick the domain to be just just the same thing it's going to be it's going to be what it's going to be the collection of points x and the y such that x squared plus y squared 
okay, less than equal to the name. So this is going to be your domain. If you pick this one uh, to be domain, uh, then you can realize that uh, C would be simply the boundary of your domain. Okay, so we can change this into the, okay, into the Green theorem format. So in the Green theorem format, uh, this uh, integral that you are interested in, it's a PDX plus QDY, okay, over this C would be changed into double integral, double integral in the domain of the D, but the round Q, round X minus round P, round Y, and the differential of the A, whatever it is. You see, this is the way you are going to connect them, connect them together, any question. So you have to work on this part. So your P function is going to be this one. So your P function is going to be 3y minus e to the sine x. In the case of the p function, you need round p round y. You see the derivative of this function respect to the y is simply 3. You see? Your q function is the second one. So this is going to be your q function. Your q function is 7x plus uh, square root of y to the four plus one. If you differentiate this one respect to the x, what are you going to get? Round q round x, this part derivative would be zero. So the derivative is seven only, seven only. You see the difference? Difference would be just a number. So go back. So the integral of the p dx plus q dy in question, Okay, it's going to be, it doesn't matter whether you write this one or not. It's uh, now it's going to be equal to the double integral on the domain of the D, the difference, the difference of round Q round X, which is a seven minus three, then the differential of the area. Okay, now this is would be simply the double integral on the domain of the four DA, you see. But what is your domain? Your domain is a circle. Since your domain is a circle, you are going to use the polar coordinate to find it. Okay, domain is going to be a circle uh, with a center at zero. Okay, centered at zero and the data, just a reminder in this domain, you have the R circle, the radius is three and your data is going to be between zero and two pi. Okay, so this double integral, on the on the circle is going to be changing to the zero to two pi okay zero to three and it's going to be four then the dr d data okay that gives you the first part's going to be just it's going to be integral from zero to two pi so the integral respect to the r would be four r r going from zero to three and when you're done d data okay four times uh, three would be would be, did I integrate it or not? Yes, yes, I did for R. Okay, so uh, that's it. So you, you substitute, so that is going to be, did I miss anything? Yes, I did. You know that when you do the polar coordinate, there is extra R here. There is extra R in the polar coordinate, remember? In the polar coordinates, so I have to integrate this one, which is going to be four r squared over over two. Remember, anytime you did the Jacobian, Jacobian for the polar coordinates is going to be r, so that's going four r dr. So I integrated it four r squared over two, which is going to be two r squared. So I'm going to have integral from zero to two pi. That's a two r squared going from zero to zero to three first, then the D data. If you put the three that give you three squared would be nine, nine times two would be 18. So it's gonna be zero to two pi 18 D data. And it's gonna be just 18 data from zero to two pi. So if you substitute that give 36 pi, 36 pi. So this is gonna be the result. You see, very complicated integral. So you were able to find the, the given integral. 
is simply is equal to the 36 pi. And then with that, you see such a great, you know, great tool really. Those integrals are very complicated. You may try to see if you can, you know, if you can paint it directly, but sometimes it would be, it would be impossible. And there are uh, some much, much more nicer format that you'll be able to apply the, the cringe theorem to get, you know, to get those, uh, those true. Okay, any question? So uh, they give you, you know, they give you the domain, they give you the instruction, you'll be able to do it. If we get time, let's do one more to get uh, these. You can have a very complicated domain to do this uh, type of uh, problems again. Uh, I give you another one, which is going to be, you know, I have, uh, let's give you one more. So you have a couple of them in your uh, practice quiz and of course a practice final. One question on the final, one question on this. And it's usually a very easy question. Most of the people, they do it uh, right away. Okay, so let's have uh, another one. Uh, I want to give you something that's not going to be polar first. Okay, I'll go with this one. Then if I didn't get time, I'll just come back and do one more tomorrow for you. So we want to find this integral. Evaluate. Uh, okay, you want to evaluate this integral, x to the fourth. Okay, x to the fourth dx plus x, y, dy on the c. Of course, we give you the instruction, apply the Gering's theorem. Is going to be where C. Uh, C is, I want to give you something much, much more, not complicated, different. Uh, C is uh, the triangular, triangular. Okay, it's going to be a triangular curve. Triangular curve uh, consisting. Okay, that's it. It's uh, consisting, consisting the line segment, the line segment from line segment from zero zero to one zero, and from. One zero to zero one, and from think of the direction how we do it zero one to zero zero. So the C is going to be just a boundary of this. Okay, that's there. Okay, so that give you the case. Just give me just one second. I have to pick something. Okay, so this is, you know that we already uh, take this integral in the triangular region quite a lot and it takes time to do it. And so we would like, you know, to apply, of course, apply the Green's theorem. Green's theorem to do it. So get the shape of the, the C to see what type of domains you can create. Solution. So get this uh, triangular region. This is it. So we start with the zero, zero. So this is going to be zero, zero. That's a zero, zero, but we're going from zero, zero to one, zero. So that would be one zero. So this is our direction. Then from one zero, we go to zero one. And this is gonna be zero one. Okay, so we go to the zero one. 
that's going to be zero one. Then from zero one, we go to the zero zero. So that's what we want. So it's a closed curve. Okay, it's a closed path. It's a closed path. <laughs> so you have to identify the domain. So this is going to be the boundary. The, your boundary is going to be boundary of a circle. It's going to be boundary of the circle. So the domain is going to be inside the circle. So this is going to be your domain. So you pick this one to be domain. Okay. And you pick the curve C as is given to you. Okay. So it's clear that the C is going to be the boundary of the D. This is the way you pick, you know, you pick the, the idea that you, you, you have it. Okay. Any question? So it can be done. Uh, so bring the, the formula for the Green's theorem. So again, by the Green's, Green's theorem. So the given integral, we call it PDX, okay? And that's it, the PDX plus Q dy over the C is gonna be the double integral on the D and the round Q round X minus round P round Y and the DA. Introduce your P and the Q and your P is X to the fourth. Okay, so in this case, you have to find the round P round Y. Round P round Y would be zero. Okay, your Q is going to be this function is going to be X times Y. So it's going to be X times Y. So in this time, you have to find the round Q round X, which is Y. Okay, so our integral now would be uh, end up with this double integral. So the integral of the P dx plus Q dy Okay, on the C would be the double integral on the D, which is a rectangle. And the difference between these two, the difference is gonna be Y minus zero. Okay, Y minus zero DA. So it's gonna be the double integral over the rectangle. And the function is simply what? Sample is Y DA. That's it. I'll go back uh, to see what's going to be the, the domain that you have. You see the domain that you pick over here. It's like the, those uh, regions that we have. We did it before. Type 1, type 2 region. Okay, if you like, you know, this is a triangle that you have. So this is going from 0 to 1. So your x would be between 0 and 1. And in order to get the y, you remember, you go up and down. So up, down, up, down, up, down. So your y would be greater than equal to the zero and it's going to be less than equal to the, okay? Less than equal to what? And you need uh, this one, okay? Uh, this is the one, you know, different way to look into it. You can parameterize it or uh, just, you know, the, the, the slope, the slope is equal to the one and the, this is going to be the slope equal to the one and you already got the the, the y intercepts okay and so uh, simply this uh, this equation is going to be uh, okay so your uh, y is going to be between zero and one minus x this is going to be the case okay and you know that this uh, you can parameterize it if you like x into the 1 minus t and the y equal to the t or just take the take the points and you have the you have the slope and uh, you have the y intercepts okay so this uh, eventually means the double integral y da over d would be change your integral from 0 to 1 and integral from 0 to 1 minus x one minus x, a y, you go with the, okay, we go with the y and then we go with the x. Okay, you take respect to the y, uh, that give you one half of the, okay, so this is gonna be zero to one, 
and that would be one half of the y squared and that going from zero to one minus x one minus x and then the dx you substitute that give one minus a y one minus x all squared you can put out bring this one half out and then easily integrate it okay are done i go to the next page of it so it's mostly a circle but you know it's not bad you know this so it's uh, going to be so this is what you have oh, i take it from here that was the zero to one and one half of the y squared y from zero to one minus x and then the dx so i pull out the one half so that would be integral from zero to one uh, simply one minus x all squared dx you know that if you take this one to be u your prime would be negative one so it's simply <laughs> negative one half one minus x cubed over three and going from zero to one and if you substitute if you put the one and you get nothing you get zero so this is going to be zero minus if you put x equal to the zero, so that give a negative half. Okay, this is negative half times one third. So the answer would be one six. So the integral of the p dx plus q dy, okay, over that path is going to be equal to the one one six. Okay, so this is the way we are going to deal with the with the Green's theorem. Okay, I'll give you more example next time. But otherwise, uh, we are done with the okay with the Green's theorem. We with the line integrals. Okay, and it's very good. As you can see, uh, you have all the possibilities, and with these tools, the integrals are going to be easy easy to handle. Uh, so we give you the quiz up to this uh, part. Okay. There is a one more concept that I talk about it tomorrow, but uh, I'm not going to give you any question on the quiz from that part. Uh, okay, but uh, it would be nice and uh, nice to know it. And that would be the uh, last part of the course. And it's a one more type of integrations, if you believe it. Uh, and that uh, we can't miss it really. It's uh, so what I do is I, I try to to get to it, give you an idea because again, such an important one. So it's very similar to the what we did over here. And you see the situation that we did, the line integral, you're just getting this integral along a curve that you have to have. But remember, uh, the in, so what we'd like to do, we'd like to extend this into the three dimensional to see what we can do over there. So the way we're going to extend it, we are going to introduce, remember the surfaces we did before? We did the surfaces before and we did the area of a surface. So what we're going to do, we are going to introduce an integral, not along the curve, along a surface. Okay, the result is going to be called surface integral. Okay, it would be quite interesting. We extend a couple of uh, these uh, things that we have. Uh, so, we, we set up the formula, it's, it's very similar to what we did here, but instead of a function of two variables that we stay with it all the time, that ds that we did have, remember, in this type of problems, the ds was the arc length. So we get the arc length for the ds. So what we're going to do is, we're going to change this one, it's so-called the capital S, if you like. That capital S would be, that S would stand for the surface. So we integrate it respect to the, to the surface and those formula would be changed with the surface area. It's gonna be very much, very much similar, but mostly in three dimensional. Okay, so we take that one and that would take us to the Stokes theorem. At least we'll be able to get to the fact that we give you the, uh, okay, we give you the, the term of the Stokes theorem and we give you one question to, to confirm it for us so that you got everything in calculus three. So if you want to 
to get more than you can study yourself. But you have everything you need, especially if you're measuring physics or engineering, you need this type of ideas, okay? So we finish it with the surface integral. So I talk about surface integral tomorrow. Uh, on Thursday, I go over the practice quiz for you, which is like a part of final review. So the final review is uh, test three, and we already got all the solution. So you don't have the solution for the, that part that we do for the quiz. So on Thursday, I go over the quiz, practice quiz, and then we give you the quiz, we, you know, we post the quiz, and on Monday, I can give you more examples on the surface integral. So six questions from the, from the quiz, we already got four. We need two more. That two more is gonna be surface integral. And then nicely, maybe it could be that. Okay, any question? So I tell you this, uh, the, the question, let me just show you this one that I have it from the past. I write it down again, if you want to prepare. This is the 13th question that you're going to see on the final. And you're going to answer 12 question. So uh, this is going to be the one, evaluation of the double and triple integral, you know, just ordinary one, double integral in polar form, double integral reversing the order, volume problem, Okay, you know that volume problem can be done by the double or triple integral. Triple integral by cylindrical coordinate. Triple integral by a spherical coordinate. Change of variable substitution method. Line integral. Give one question that you have to use those conservative force, like the examples that we did today. Just gonna be one question on that. Then we give one question on Green's theorem. And that's going to be the one I just repeat here, line integral independent path. So we get two questions on the line integral. And for the leftover that we are going to do on uh, tomorrow, and we are not going to question on the quiz, is this surface integral and extension of the Green's theorem in three-dimensional would be called a Stokes theorem. So one question on the surface integral and one a Stokes theorem. Okay, that would be the uh, the kind of 13 questions that we have, and you answer 12 questions for us, okay? I repeat it again, you know, next time so they can see it. Okay, that's it, so any question? So if you have done your test, well done. If I haven't, just say, uh, you know that tomorrow is the last day, so as soon as, then I post the solution to that test, so we can have a look. And if you have any question, just let me know. Okay, have a good one, and see you tomorrow for another uh, exciting topics, really, that would be the surface integral. Okay, have a good one. Bye-bye.